welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And I also want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. We have so many new subscribers. Welcome. Welcome to this lovely community that seems to be growing at a nice pace. And everybody who's coming and subscribing to this channel is so lovely. It's just amazing. I read your comments. By the way, if there's a comment that I don't respond to, it's not because I'm too busy or don't want to or any of that. It's genuinely because I haven't seen it. Sometimes the YouTube system doesn't put the comments in front of me. I don't know why that is. Some of the comments just slip through the net and I apologize. Sometimes I see them three weeks later and I will reply. So please make sure, you know, if there's something that you want to say or if there's something that you want to ask, please feel free to, to have a chat below. And to all the new subscribers, you'll find that everybody here is so friendly. Uh, I've noticed over the past few months that people help each other out, you know. And um, so if I'm not there responding, another lovely viewer will come in and step in and say something. So it's a really, really lovely community that seems to be growing and I'm enjoying it so much. So um, I've got a note here on my little scribbled notes that last month we had 900 views on the, I think it was the January Outlook. So uh, that means there are quite a few people watching. So please subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'm hoping that we can get this um, subscriber count up to about a thousand if possible. That would be amazing. So, um, you know, but we can take time. Don't worry, I'm in no rush. Uh, but yeah, I definitely wanted to kick this one off saying, you know, welcome to the new people and, you know, thanks for subscribing and all your comments, all your likes and dislikes and everything, everything. I love it all because it's just like, wow, people are engaging and interacting and making their voice heard. And that's wonderful. So, you know, that's really cool. Um if we have a look, I think I've covered all the latest news for the channel. If we have a look at the news in terms of what's been going on, I did say, I think last month, that um, I deliberately only looked at conjunctions, two major conjunctions, and I said I didn't want to look at transits because I felt like, I felt like it would be a slow start to the year, and it has been a slow start to the year. Um, it hasn't been a very fast-paced year. I know last time I mentioned in the news Alan Greenspan had said run for cover. So I've definitely been watching the financial markets, but there's been no crash. There's been nothing happening. There's been a lot of talk about um, various big players kicking the can down the road, which I think is an ongoing thing. I don't think that's a bad thing, funnily enough. <laughs> um, I used to, but now I kind of think, well, maybe you know, maybe these systems are here to last. I don't know. It's an interesting one. But um, but we do have, I've got a note here about Saturn Ketu conjunction that's coming up and that's a big thing that's coming up for us in the sidereal Vedic astrology community. It's really big and I'm definitely going to do a video about it. Uh, I have been thinking about it and it's interesting. I'm kind of thinking about that and I'm thinking about Brexit. Brexit, we've got a no deal situation that looks likely and quite frankly I think that would work well with this Saturn Ketu conjunction coming in because you think about it, Ketu is kind of what we've mastered. Saturn is, yes, it's structure and all that kind of thing, but maybe it's what I'm kind of seeing with this and I'm still thinking about it. I haven't, you know, materialized my thoughts about this yet, but um I'm thinking, could Saturn Ketu conjunction represent a time of some dismantling of old structures? Also, for example, I've got a note here, um, you know, where we can expect the continued dissolving of man-made systems as well, man-made structures. So I'm kind of thinking um, redundancies uh, coming up in a way, possibly maybe at that Saturn K2 conjunction time. I don't know. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think more. I'm going to think deeper. But that is one of the things I'm thinking. And then you've got this Brexit no deal thing. Uh, and, and is that likely to coincide with this Saturn K2 conjunction, which it seems like it might. So 
I'm going to keep thinking and, and stay tuned to the channel because I will be giving you my thoughts on um, Saturn Ketu conjunction and of course what it means for you personally because that's what I care about a lot. I usually just do a little bit of overview of the news but really when you click on your little um, you know your little personalized reading it's all about you it's all about you as a person and the stars and that's it I don't go into any um, broader thing there but quite you know in the introduction to these videos I do like to touch on the news a little bit because it is interesting to see how things line up uh, news wise I think the only really interesting things that have been happening are uh, two things Caitlin Ohashi and the perfect 10 now, if you haven't watched her I should I'll put a link to her below because it's just thoroughly inspirational she's been this ray of sunshine that's opened up the year and there is good news in the world you know and you just see her smile you see her light up you see her dancing on that floor and and you just think wow aren't we incredible isn't it inspirational you know what human beings are capable of doing right so that has been amazing um, to see and the other thing that actually popped into my mind just as I was washing my hands and I was combing my hair and I come to put the camera on and I'm in the bathroom and I'm thinking oh there was that Gillette advert and it was all about masculinity or something like that and I thought I might as well make a mention of that because I've, I've put all my notes together and I've looked at everybody's um, chart overview and I'm wearing red and I've said that the so last month it was re-engineering this month I'm going for masculine energy or masculinity. That's the big theme because we've got Mars uh, stepping into Aries, his Multricon kind of place. He loves being there. And when I was clicking through, clicking up the days of all of Feb and looking at everything, the Shadbala score for um, Mars was just going through the roof. So I'm seeing masculine energy is the big focus and it's pretty incredible that this Gillette advert has come out and there's all this talk about toxic masculinity. It's also really interesting in just about everybody's little mini reading one of the messages I have one of the main messages I have for this month is men go out and be men you know do manly things and enjoy it so I've kind of got an opposite viewpoint maybe. But it's interesting, just before this video, I thought maybe I should just mention this Gillette advert because, yeah, that, that has come up at this time where Mars is getting ready to go into Aries, the place where he loves. And, uh, you know, he's the Lord of Aries, and, and, but it's the Multricon position. I'm pretty sure I've got that right. And, and the Shadbala starts to go crazy. I mean, I saw the Shadbala going off, literally off the chart on my screen. I wish I could show it to you, but, um, well another time. <laughs> I've got the camera just set up perfectly so I'll just leave it there. But um, yes yeah, so, and, and also because it's the month of love I wanted to touch on the whole Mars and Venus thing so that's what I'm doing for everybody's uh, little mini reading. But let's take a look at some other quick things first. Let's have a look at the moon dates. What have we got going on moon wise? Um, this is really quite nice. So we've got new moon in Capricorn in Shravana Nakshatra 4th Feb 2019 approximately 3.02 in the afternoon UK time. What did I think of here? Did I put some notes here? No I didn't put any notes. No I did. Uh, new moon. I've got the note here. Great time for meditation. Shravana actually means listening and that's something that um, I have discovered through a book, a lovely nakshatra book by Camilla Sutton. I'll try and quote my sources wherever I can <clears throat> because I know some of you are interested in that. Um, asking for next steps, a great time for meditation during this new moon. Uh, sometimes I talk about sowing seeds and it is a time to plant seeds regarding career but I got a vibe more so that if you're lost or if you're a bit stuck in your career or you're not quite sure, then this is a really terrific time to, so around that 4th of Feb time, and you can do it in the days leading up to 4th of Feb, you can do it in the days afterwards, you can do this any time. And I feel like it's very much for people who perhaps they need a bit of inspiration, they need a bit of guidance, they need to ask for next steps. 
So it's a real time of just quiet meditation and ask, ask the divine, ask your angelic guides, ask for, okay, you know, what do you want me to do? Divine heavens, what do you, now I used to do this prayer quite a lot. I used to, I used to even look at my hands and I kind of used to say to the gods, use these hands, use these hands for some good work, please. Like, just give me some work to do you know um that i used to do that meditation quite a bit and apparently i think oprah did that meditation as well i'm pretty sure maybe i even pinched the idea from her but i definitely uh have done this kind of thing quite a bit um asking for next steps planting seeds regarding career i do think so with this new moon here um there's also the point about your job versus your career versus your calling so a job is something you do for money. Your career is something that you do for free um, or for very little money. And I feel like that's where, where I've graduated to. I feel like I'm in the career stage of my life. I'm in a, a stage of my life where, um, you know, I've got just enough money coming in, but I work uh, quite long hours doing what I love, doing what I'm passionate about, which is this, you know, which is astrology and which is this thing that I read heaps of books on and learn all the time and, um, you know, and thankfully I'm being given time to do this. So I feel very, very fortunate. Uh, so your job is something you do for money. Your career is something you do, you know, anyway. Uh, and your calling, now that is a very deep and big thing. And I think that when we see people like, um, for example, Marianne Williamson, perhaps um, Eckhart Tolle, you know, those, those really kind of up there people who are, who are doing their spiritual work with all of their heart and all of their mind and all of their body, you know, that is, that's on another level. Um, and I imagine as well a calling is something that you'd, you'd gladly give up your life for as well, um, you know, some good cause or something like that. So job, career, calling, you know, where are you on that scale and where do you want to be? And perhaps you need to ask for guidance. You need to ask for next steps. I've asked for steps. Believe me, I've, I, I've asked uh, the heavens I'm asking for guidance all the time and you know sometimes I get guidance I wanted to wear pink today but I got told no you're wearing red so I'm like okay and I'm not exactly 100% sure who's telling me but I, I just get a sense I get a knowing and I'm like okay I'm wearing red I'm wearing red fine um, full moon let's take a look at the full moon when's this happening full moon Leo Maga Nakshatra uh, ooh how nice. Um, 19th Feb, how royal, how regal. Uh, 19th Feb 2019, approximately 9.54 in the morning UK time. Okay, so we've got that new moon, 4th Feb, we've got the full moon, 19th Feb, um, beautiful, 9.45 in the morning UK time. So full moon, illuminating efforts of the self. Yeah, so we've got this thing about job, career, calling. Um, one of the th thoughts I had about this full moon is that it's illuminating the efforts of yourself. One of the lesser known qualities of the fifth house and of Leo and of this part of the sky is um, self-made people come from here. So very often self-taught people, self-trained people, people who, who make everything themselves. Um, a lot of self-made people come out of Leo. So... Um, this is a good time to reflect on what you have made to this point uh, and how it measures up with where you wanted to be. Perhaps this is a little bit about measuring yourself against your peers. Perhaps this is a little bit about, you know, um, meeting a university friend and it's, it's 10 years down the track or it's 20 years down the track, 30 years down the track for you, however long. You meet that old friend and you think, wow, we've both had exactly the same amount of time but we've both done very different things. I kind of think this full moon might be a bit about reflecting on your kingdom and, and how you've grown it, how far you've grown it, what your self-efforts have, have created. I think that could be a really, really good thing um, to be contemplating at that full moon time. So I think I've covered all my introductory notes and I think it's a good time now to get stuck into 
the little monthly reports. So I'll just check how we're doing on time. Wow, well, I have gone on a little bit. Uh, Aries Moon, I am going to welcome lovely Aries Moon people. Aries Moon, welcome. Thanks so much for joining. I hope you're having a lovely start to the year. I hope it hasn't been too chaotic a start. I hope it's been measured and easy. I hope you've had some time to re-engineer some aspect of your life, as I mentioned last time. Let's take a look at what's going on for you this month. Um, this time I'm going to be looking at two energies in particular and I'm looking at transits. Things are beginning to move. Um, we're going to see some exciting stuff in March, right? So March is going to be a big month astrologically. This month it's nice and there's movement. Um, I want to look at Venus and I want to look at Mars. So Venus is transiting your ninth house and she'll be conjunct with Saturn mid-month, around the mid-month. But she's kind of, they're both in the same house for the whole month basically from what I saw on the, the charts there. Um, so this is a great transit for you. This is a great time to spend with your partner uh, if you are coupled up. And it's a great time for education, travel. Uh, and I also thought because of Saturn's conjunction here, I was really contemplating this this morning and I kind of got a vibe that this could be, so if you're single and we do have Valentine's Day coming up, um, you know, and, and if, if, if it's not a month of just being really super busy and swept up with the partner and doing lots of things and all that kind of thing, if you're on your own, with Saturn's conjunction here, I was thinking that this could be a time to just check in with your relationship with your father, actually. Um, I know that Saturn is really the son of the sun, but, um, but he is also old. And I really like Saturn Venus energy because it's kind of the old man and the young lady and they're friends, they get on. And what I'm actually sensing more than anything is a father-daughter energy. Uh, and I was kind of thinking that this could be a really nice time to reflect on your relationship with your father. And I've got a note here that there's, there's some possibility of healing the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him. And the reason I say that is because we've got Sagittarius here. So there's some intellectual, something about you using your mind and reflecting uh, and there's some gift in it for you. And this is specifically for women, this message. I've got another message for men, so don't worry, hang in there, guys. Um, so that is really my message to you, Aries Moon, that, um, that to be contemplating your relationship with your father in some way. Now, I've got a note here, the father wound results from illness, divorce, death, distance, or dysfunction. Right, so you, you know you might have experienced any one of those. Uh, for me, it's yeah, definitely distance. I had a distant dad for sure. So I've got a note here, ladies. There's some gift in contemplating your father-daughter relationship, and this is something you can do on your own. Okay, this is in the privacy of your own mind. It's a meditative, reflective sort of a thing. You don't need anyone's help, or you don't need a witness, or any of that. You just it's, Find some time to contemplate this at some point during this month. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the Mars energy. Mars energy this month is absolutely epic. It's off the charts epic. Um, it's really quite incredible. Mars enters Aries. He's moved through composition. He's very happy to be there. And um, when you look at it on the, the system and you're clicking up through the dates, it's absolutely amazing because the Mars energy on Shadbala literally goes off the chart. For a few days. So I've got a note here, expect a large burst of masculine energy in your first house, especially from Feb 6 to Feb 12. It says Shad Bala power is huge. Um, so this is happening in your first house of self and I'm suggesting that you can use, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman, you can use this energy for new health routine, dieting, uh, anything connected with the physical body. Um, you know, this, this can be a really good time to to change things there or improve things there even if just a tiny bit even if it's like okay I'm, I'm only going to have a coffee every two days 
right? So something like that. You might feel a little bit tired. Um, this could be have a bit of energy drain to it as well, potentially, so take care of yourself. I've got a note specifically for men, right? And this is the masculine energy thing. Guys, it's Valentine's Day. And I've got a note here that tell her you love her from 6 to 12 Feb. And of course, if you're in a same-sex relationship, tell them one that you love. If you're, if you're feeling courageous, if you're feeling like, I just want to do this, I just want to communicate to this person, I'm crazy about them, do it from 6 to 12 Feb. And it's really cool because you can be like, it, it can be very romantic because it can be like, I don't want to wait for Valentine's Day. I have to tell you, I'm just so excited and thrilled by you that I have to tell you now or whatever it is but like it might be cheesy but just do it how wild how crazy but this is that Mars energy and I'm just feeling it I'm just like you know that's the strong vibe I got that do something on those days and and, and you can be like I don't care for this Valentine's Day thing it's stupid I just think you're awesome and I have to tell you today and I'm to, I'm making today my celebration of my love for you so it's a real kind of courageous ballsy type of thing that I'm encouraging here and do it if there's someone that you like do it you know take the lead and go for it so um, that is my summary of things for you Aries moon uh, we are now going to welcome the absolutely lovely Taurus moon Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you're having a lovely start to the year. I hope that you're easing into the year nicely. You're starting to plan things. You're getting things underway. It's very exciting. I'm feeling that this year is so much better than last year. I don't know about you, but this is a good year. Now, what I'm going to do this month is we're going to take a look at two main energies. Last month, I looked at two major conjunctions. This time, I'm looking at two main transits so I'm looking at the transit of Venus because I think it's really cool uh, and I'm also looking at the transit of Mars because Mars is uh, yeah well you'll see so Venus is transiting your eighth house um, there's a nice conjunction happening with Saturn really around the mid-month time but Venus is in that house for the entire month uh, and this is a really good transit for you, Taurus Moon. This is absolutely lovely. This is a great time you can have with your partner. So this is great. This is great for love and romance. If you're in a relationship, of course, it's Valentine's Day coming. So um, that's something to look forward to. It's great for money. This is great. It's just, it is a good time. Yeah, money. And the eighth house, other people's money. So that's quite nice. <laughs> um, now, due to Saturn's conjunction, also a great time for introspection. Right, so if you are single, and this is my message really to single ladies out there, if you are single, um, I was kind of contemplating this Saturn-Venus conjunction and what it means. Now, in a reading, I would never say that a Saturn-Venus conjunction means this, but this kind of came to me in the morning when I went for a walk, I went for a breath of fresh air and I was like, okay, that's right, I get it. This could be a good time to be contemplating the relationship with your father. Um, it's a great time for introspection, great time for potentially, and I've got a note here, healing the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him. And the reason I say that is because we've got this quite masculine and old fatherly energy of Saturn. We've got that young, apologies Taurus Moon, the camera just got cut. So where were we? I think I was describing this conjunction of Saturn and Venus. And hopefully I'd said the point that if I saw this in a birth chart, I wouldn't be saying this. This is something that came to me this morning as I was reflecting on the conjunction in a transit sort of sense for an overall overview for today. So this is not how I see the conjunction uh, normally, but for today I just got a sense that there can be a message in here for single women That as I said, did I read this part out my notes? Um, possibly healing the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him. Because we've got Saturn in Sagittarius. 
Saturn in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is that intellectual understanding of things. And we've got Venus. She's kind of just breezing through that house. And she'll meet Ketu as Ketu comes back to be with Saturn. She'll kind of give Ketu a high five and then she's going to keep going. But she, the fact of the matter is she is going through that house and Saturn is there. And I was really seeing him in this context of him being old father time. And it's this young lady and old father time and there's a wisdom thing going on here. And I definitely got father energy come through. And I thought that if you're a single lady and we've got Valentine's Day coming up, the whole world's going to be thinking about relationships. So I was thinking that if you are single, it could be a good time to reflect on the relationship with your father. And what's in it for you? Well, I've got a note here, ladies, there's a gift in this contemplation time. Um, there will be some gift uh, as you're thinking about your relationship with your father. Right? And it can come through if you're mentally reflecting, intellectually understanding your relationship with him. There'll be something that comes through. And this concept of the father wound, it really results from illness, divorce, death, distance or dysfunction. So any form of trauma, but even mild distance, even if your dad was just an office worker or something like that, you know, on reflection, you might discover some things some of your own needs that weren't met that you can now give to yourself and there can be some real gifts that come out of that kind of contemplation. So the energy is supportive of that kind of thing, especially with Venus transiting your eighth house. It's a really good activity to do. Um, Mars energy is epic this month. It's really the big news, I thought. Um, Mars enters Aries, his Multricon position. It's really exciting. When you see it on the system, these little shud bars go up and down like a graphic equalizer and Mars is just going through the roof from about Feb 6 to Feb 12. Huge shud power. So this is happening in your 12th house of spirituality. So for men or women, uh, this is a great time to step up your spiritual studies or, you know, engaging in spirituality. Mars can be a bit restless um, in the 12th house. Uh, you know, restlessly seeking and searching and he'll try every type of modality and he likes to, to move through those things. Um, it could be a good time to explore something new uh, in terms of travel or, yeah, and I've got to note Mars is restless in this house for sure. He's a bit restless here, but that's okay. That's quite good. Uh, and I have a note specifically for men, right? There's this huge surge of masculine energy. It's exciting. So I'm saying use it because it's happening around, it's happening just before the 14th of Feb. Now this is really brilliant guys because you can do something super romantic and sweep her off her feet on the days from 6 to 12 Feb. You can just use that natural masculine energy and tell her you love her or do something gallant or courageous or crazy or passionate or do something, you know, use this energy, um, enjoy masculine energy, right? There's all this campaign about toxic masculinity and Gillette advert and all that. Don't worry about that. Throw that out the window. Enjoy some raw power masculine energy. Really, really get into it. So that's my message for the guys this month. Um, but Taurus Moon, I'm wishing you a terrific Feb. I hope you have a really great month. I hope it the year begins to crank up for you and it's, it's getting more exciting. I know March is going to be a very exciting month astrologically so stay tuned, come back and watch your March outlook when, when that is ready. I really look forward to seeing you then. All right so we are going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this month I am going to be looking at two transits. Last time I looked at two conjunctions and we had the whole re-engineering thing. This time I'm looking at two transits in particular. I'm looking at your Venus transit in the seventh house and I'm looking at a Mars transit. Nice and simple. Um, the overall emphasis for all of this is masculine energy. Masculine energy is the big thing this month. That is what's going on. Believe me, I wanted to wear pink today and I was guided that no, you're wearing red. So I'm like, okay. And then when I was going through all the notes and I was going through everybody's transit chart, I was like, yes, there's a big masculine thing going on. Um, but let's start with Venus. Venus 
as we know, one of the more feminine energies uh, in, in all the planets. So Venus is transiting your seventh house um, and she'll be conjunct with Saturn mid-month. She's in the house with Saturn all of the month, the whole month. So it's those two together, but mid-month they're particularly conjunct. Um, this is not an ideal time uh, with the Venus energy here. So in terms of your partner, in terms of relationships, in terms of partnerships, in terms of business. Um, but don't worry, you've got more luck with the Mars energy there, but your Venus energy isn't, isn't thrilled. So if you're a very strong Venusian person, then, and this could be a guy or a girl, right? Um, you know, it's not an ideal time uh, for, for relationships, especially marriage and business partners and that kind of thing. Um, but don't worry, there's, you've got great Mars energy and we're going to get into that and that's really exciting. Because Saturn and Venus are together, now this is not how I interpret Saturn-Venus conjunction in your birth chart or any of that, but for this particular reading and for this transit thing that I'm doing for this exact exercise um, I am seeing that single ladies could for example benefit from contemplating their relationship with their father right in the privacy of your own mind don't need to share it with anyone don't need a coach don't need it's something you do on your own right you don't need a witness you don't need to tell a friend none of that in the privacy of your own mind um, the energies here to me are really indicating that it could be a really good time for you to, or an opportunity to heal the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him because this is happening in Sagittarius. So what is the father wound? Well, it results from illness, divorce, death, distance or dysfunction. So, and my main message to the ladies out there is that um, there's some gift in contemplating the relationship with your father um, in the privacy of your own mind, okay, and this is something you can do on your own. So it's just a sweet thing, you know, whether dad's alive or passed on or he's here or he's in another country or whatever, it doesn't matter. could be a good time to contemplate your relationship with him, okay. Um, Mars energy is absolutely epic this month. It's huge. It's off the charts. It is literally off the charts. I, when I was clicking through and I was seeing the Shadbala, you know, the graphic equalizer type thing going up and down, Mars literally goes off the chart. It's high and that's happening from Feb 6 to Feb 12. It's this huge surge of masculine energy. Shadbala power is huge because Mars is entering his Multricon position. Multricon is the energy source. It's a root trine. It's a root source of energy. It's really exciting. So... This is huge. And for you, it's happening. Oh my God, it's happening in your 11th house. Yes, this is great. This is great, great, great. You're one of the lucky ones. There are only three lucky ones. <laughs> there are only three lucky people that I'll be uber duper excited for, and you are one of them. So it's great energy for you, Gemini Moon. Great health, energy, projects, friends, support, gains, money, opportunities, whatever you want. This is great. So great, great, great. Don't. Don't focus in on the Venus uh, energy if Venus is bringing you down or whatever. Don't worry about that. Tune into this Mars, Mars energy. It's really, really good for you. And I have a note specifically for men this time. Uh, so for ladies, my specific note was, you know, tune into the father wound or the father stuff if you can. For men, men, I have a specific message for you and that is tell her you love her, okay, from 6 to 12 Feb. That natural surge of masculine energy is there for you. Use it. Don't worry about what's going on in the media. Don't worry about Me Too and toxic masculinity and Gillette adverts and all this nonsense. Don't worry about it. If you want to sweep a lady off her feet, you do it and tell her and do it 6 to 12 Feb. Do it before Valentine's Day. That's even more romantic because you can be like, do you know what? I don't need a day to tell you I love you, right? So that is my message for you, Gemini Moon. I hope you're inspired. I hope you like that. I am very excited for March. March is going to be a really, really exciting month. So do not miss March. Um, hopefully I'm going to do another video about March because we've got significant uh, Rahu Ketu axis is shifting. So I should prepare a little something extra for that. So keep your eyes peeled on the channel and I'll see you next time. All right, we are going to welcome Cancer Moon.
Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, today I'm going to look at two transits in particular. So I'm going to look at Venus transit and I'm going to look at Mars transit. Last time we looked at two conjunctions. Um, I didn't particularly want to look at the transits. Now things are moving again. Uh, I want to look at the movement and what we're seeing here, Venus and Mars was exciting me the most. So we've got Venus transiting your sixth house and she'll be conjunct with Saturn mid-month and you've got Mars transiting your 10th house. Okay, so let's go into these. Um, yeah, look, I mean, both of these are a bit kind of interesting. They're not ideal transits, but they're not bad. Okay, so that there's some productive work that you can do here. So when Venus transits your sixth house, it's not the best transit. Um, go slow in relationships, take your time, uh, you know, and what I've got is a note here about the Saturn conjunction happening with Venus. For me, so in a birth chart, I would not read it this way. This I'm reading in this way specifically for this reading because this morning it kind of occurred to me that Saturn is that kind of old father energy. Venus is that young lady sort of energy. She's scooting into that house. They're crossing paths. Um, I just thought, and it's happening in Sagittarius, right? So this is a chance for you single ladies out there or, you know, if you're having some trouble with your relationship or any of that, um, it's a great time to possibly make some progress and chip away at healing the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him, okay, because this is happening in Sagittarius. So now the father wound, what is that? Well, it results from illness, divorce, death, distance, or dysfunction. Um, and we've all got it, everybody's got it, whether you're a man or a woman, um, everybody's got some healing to do in this area. Some people are not conscious of it right they're too busy making money or something but if you're quite spiritual and you're growing and your consciousness is growing then you want to be doing some of this work now um the note that i have here specifically for ladies is that you know if you spend some time in contemplation there of your relationship with your father there's some gift in it for you okay uh, and this is work that you can do on your own and you don't need anyone um you know, and it's something you just, meditation, maybe you're on a long bus ride home or something like that. Just think about that and think about that relationship with him. And if there's anything that you missed out on, how can you give that to yourself, all right? So Mars energy is absolutely off the charts this month. So this is both for men and women. It's huge energy. It's really, really exciting. I was so excited. I was looking at the charts and it's like, you can see it. You can see the Shadbala. It's like a graphic equalizer thing. And you see the Mars one just goes huge. It goes off the chart. And that's happening from Feb 6 to Feb 12. Um, that Shadbala power is just huge. That raw power of the planet is really huge. So this is happening in your 10th house of career fame honors. This is not the best transit for career and things like that. Um, so go slow at work. Don't rush any work projects or anything like that. If you're feeling tired, drained, take time out, rest. Don't, you know, decline that work party or whatever it is. Um, you know, be at home if you need to. Now, I've got a specific note for men. So just like with the ladies I suggested, father wound, uh, check that out. Men, I've got a note for you men. And the note is this. Tell her you love her. And that is from 6 to 12 Feb. That's in the lead up to Valentine's Day. That's when the masculine energy, that raw masculine energy is really high. So I'm thinking Valentine's Day is coming and do something romantic and say to her that, look, I don't need a day to tell you I love you. I'm going to do it today. You know, and don't worry about me too and this and that. And don't be afraid, right? If you're afraid then you might attract a problem, okay? So turn up fearlessly. I think you've got Mars on your side. So I think, you know, tell someone you love them. Uh, it might require courage, but Mars is there, so don't worry. So Cancer Moon, I really hope this is a great month for you. Stay tuned for next month because March is a very significant month astrology-wise. We've got a big shift happening right here to Axis, and I'll hopefully do an extra video about that as well. So now that I've said it on the camera, it's likely to happen. All right, I'm going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, in today's little outlook, I'm going to have a look at two transits in particular. I'm going to look at Venus transit and I'm going to look at Mars transit. Last time we looked at two conjunctions. Uh, I didn't do transits. This time we are doing transits. 
but it's just Venus and Mars. So Venus is transiting your fifth house um, and is conjunct with Saturn mid-month. So it's a great time for creativity, great time to spend with the kids if you've got children. So that's wonderful. Projects with them, being creative with them, creating your own you know, artwork or business or um, maybe something digital, you know, whatever it is. Now's the time. Uh, due to Saturn's conjunction, so if you are a single lady and, you know, you're on your own and or if you're in a relationship that, you know, things aren't quite working as you would like, the energies are also supportive of you um, having some introspective time. And I am saying, so I'm reading this Saturn-Venus conjunction in this way. Now, I wouldn't read it this way in a birth chart, but I am reading it this way for this particular reading. And that is to say that you've got an opportunity to heal the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him. This is happening in Sagittarius. So what is the father wound? The father wound results from illness, divorce, death, distance or dysfunction. So my special note to the ladies out there is that if you spend some time in contemplation this month, contemplating your father and the relationship with your father, um, there's some gift in it for you. There's some healing to come for you. And one of the great healing things is to recognize where you didn't get the love you needed and to try and give that to yourself now. Okay, so this is something you can, you can definitely do on your own and it's soft and gentle and it's really nice and it, it'll be uplifting. The energies are supporting that. It could happen in your dream state as well. Um, Mars energy is absolutely epic this month. It's off the charts. I was looking at the Shadbala equalizer thing and the, the Mars bar is like going literally off the chart and that's happening from Feb 6 to Feb 12. The Shadbala, so the raw power of the planet is absolutely huge this, this impacts both men and women uh, it's happening in your ninth house of and i'm calling it of man-made systems man-made systems of thought so it's not a terrific time in terms of work so don't be pushing any work energies uh projects um or or rushing things at work or any of that uh you know also health wise you could feel a bit of a dip in your energy or a drain in your energy but that raw burst of masculinity I was just excited for the men out there because we've got Valentine's Day coming on Feb 14th and my message to you guys is that tell her you love her from 6th of Feb to 12th Feb okay tell her you love her right pluck up some courage there's that natural beautiful Mars energy it will be abundant from 6 to 12 Feb and just go out there and do it just do it tell her you love her okay don't worry about me too don't worry about the Gillette advert don't worry about any of that do the the guy thing and don't be afraid if you're afraid then you might attract that thing that you're afraid of so keep fear out of your energy field altogether all right, Leo Moon, so I hope you've enjoyed that. I'm going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to check on timing. Hopefully we'll get through yours in without a hitch. Venus is transiting your fourth house, so I'm going to focus on two transits this month. Last time I did two conjunctions. This time I'm doing two transits. I'm doing Venus and Mars. They are so exciting this month. Just wait. So Venus is transiting your fourth house. Oh, this is good. This is good for you. I'm so happy. Um, conjunct with Saturn mid-month. So this is a great time with your Venus transit. Wish fulfillment. Great for property. Great for um, anything domestic. Uh, hence the property thing. Anything to do with mum. All of that kind of thing is really good. Now, due to Saturn's conjunction, um, one of the things that I've kind of intuited from this, this isn't particularly to do with a Venus Saturn conjunct. If I saw this in your birth chart, I would not be saying this as such, but because of the transit and, and because of the nature of this reading um, and what I what came to me this morning was that this could be the energies are currently supporting you contemplating um, healing the father wound and specifically healing the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him because this is happening in Sagittarius, the Saturn and Venus together. So that's how I'm seeing it, guys. Um, and what do I mean by the father wound? The father wound, 
So that's something that results from illness, divorce, death, distance or dysfunction. So, you know, even if your dad just worked in the office all day and didn't spend any time with you, right, that counts. So this is possibly a time to be reflecting on some of that. So I've got a note here, ladies, if you spend some time in contemplation, there's some gift in it for you, okay, there's some healing gift in that for you. This is something you can do on your own, you don't need anyone, you don't need anybody else, it's just a meditative time where you reflect on your relationship with your father. And the healing will come if you discover something that you missed out on that you can now give to yourself. So that is something to, to definitely contemplate. It might be one to Google search as well, um, you know, if, if that's something that you need to, to look into deeper. There are lots of great articles on the topic. Uh, Mars energy is absolutely epic this month. So we've got Mars transiting your eighth house. Take it easy regarding health. Don't dress too much don't do too much um you know this is yeah this is definitely a time where you might want to chill out a little bit uh but i've got this you know mars is entering aries right his multi composition this is the root trying the energy source this is the place where he's really excited to be and when you look at this on the system there's this like the shadbala graphic equalizer thing the mars just goes off the charts it literally goes off the charts and that's happening from feb 6 to feb 12 it's really exciting so i have a specific note for men for the men out there i'm gonna say tell her you love her right what are you waiting for come on valentine's day is on the 14th and this amazing phenomenon of this amazing shadbala energy is happening from 6 to 12 feb it's absolutely amazing there's all this natural masculine beautiful energy available to you so men be brave do it go and tell her that you love her um don't worry about you know, all this talk of toxic masculinity and the Gillette advert and all that nonsense. Don't worry about it. Go out there, guns are blazing, tell her you love her, see what happens. You can write a comment below. Tell me if it didn't work out. I don't know. It'll work out. I believe in you. I believe in you, Virgo Moon. Come on. Uh, next month, stay tuned for next month because we've got March. It's a very exciting month astrologically. We've also got the... Um, the Rahu Ketu axis is shifting at that time. Hopefully I'll do an extra video for that, so stay tuned. All right, well, I'm going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this time I'm only going to be looking at two transits. Last time I looked at two conjunctions. This time I'm looking at two important transits. We're looking at the transit of Venus and Mars. These are the most exciting players this month, I believe. Uh, we've got Venus transiting your third house. Right, so Libra Moon, apologies about that. The camera got cut, so how about we start again? So I think I was saying that Venus is transiting your third house, if I got that right. Venus is going to be conjunct Saturn, particularly around the mid-month point. Um, this is a really nice transit. This is a really great time. So whether you're a guy or a girl, great time. Um, great time with friends. Courage, prosperity, money, perhaps a rise in reputation, lots of good things. Lots of good things can happen as a result of this transit. But I have a particular message for the women out there. So I've got a particular message for the women and I've got a particular message for the guys. So uh, in this particular mini reading, I am splitting things out in that way. And basically, as I was contemplating the Saturn-Venus conjunction, now, I wouldn't normally say that a Saturn-Venus conjunction relates to a father wound. Hang on, I'm just going to make sure that I'm absolutely recording the sound. I am. Sorry. This is what happens when the camera keeps cutting. Ugh, technical problems. Um, right. So Saturn-Venus conjunction, I wouldn't look at that in a birth chart and go, that means a father wound. I wouldn't do that. But because of the nature of this exercise, because I was looking at the transits, because I was looking at what's happening in the world, because lots of things, I was contemplating so many things this morning as I was putting all of this together. And I got a really strong sense that if you're a single lady, we've also got Valentine's Day coming. A lot of people are going to be thinking about love. 
And Libra, I mean, we're in this sign. I was thinking this very thing this morning. I was thinking about the fact that you may not celebrate um, Valentine's Day. You might think it's a commercial load of nonsense. But the fact is that Libra, I mean, you look at it from a commercial sense. You know, millions of red roses are going to be sold on that day and millions of cards and millions of, you know, there's going to be a lot of um, economic activity around this whole thing. So, you know, that is in the air. And um, in terms of this Saturn-Venus conjunction, one of the things that occurred to me this morning as I was contemplating everything in relation to, you know, the movement of money through the economy and what people are doing and saying and thinking, and this is in the air. So um, it really kind of struck me that women in particular are going to need to, you know, as Venus is flying through there and there's Saturn, the old man, old father time, old man kind of energy. I was thinking about this concept of healing the father wound. And what occurred to me was um, that this is a great time for introspection, personal in introspection, whether you're a guy or a girl, quite frankly, um, it doesn't matter. We've all got father wound. We've all got some of that to deal with. And um, you know, some people are just not conscious of it. And if you're not conscious of it, you're out busy making money and, and you don't care about this stuff. So, you know, um, but for those who are awakening and, and growing and becoming more sensitive, this is an important thing. <clears throat> so I've got a note here that it's it's the chance for healing the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him. The intellectual understanding, I get that through Sagittarius. So that's also why um, this has come into my analysis. Now, what is the father wound? Well, it results from illness, divorce, divorce death, distance or dysfunction. So even just you know, a workaholic dad who was at his office all the time, you know, that's distant, right? And, and that will have some wounding for a little child who really needed him. So ladies in particular, I'm saying that there's some gift in this for you. There's some gift through contemplating your relationship with your father. Um, this is something you can do on your own. This is, this is just this gentle, lovely exercise. It could be something you do on a long bus ride home. Um, you know, that's all. And, and through that contemplation, you might discover areas where um, perhaps dad didn't give to you. And that's something that you can now give to yourself. Okay, so that's the work to be done there. So that's a Venus transit. Mars energy this month, absolutely epic. Basically, when you look at the Shadbala um, on the screen, it's going absolutely... I'm, I'm thinking about possibly recording some of this and putting it at the end of this video. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if I'll get around to that, but basically epic Mars energy this month. Mars is stepping into Aries. He's excited. That's his military composition. Really, really exciting. So expect a large burst of masculine energy in your first well, not in your first house. For you, it's in your seventh house uh, of partnerships. So um, that's from Feb 6 to Feb 12, huge Shabala energy. So now this is happening in your house of partnership. Uh, and this is not terrific for spouse, partner, business partner, that kind of thing. Um, you might need to go slow uh, regarding your health and regarding energy drains. But despite that, Despite that, I have a general overview message for men, okay? It's, this applies to you no matter what star sign you are. This is consistent in all the mini readings. Men, tell her you love her, okay? From 6 to 12 Feb in particular, you've got that surge of natural masculine energy. So use it. Tell her you love her, right? And say that, look, I don't need a day to tell you I love you. I don't need 14th of Feb or whatever it is. Yeah, so, so do it in that time space because it's more romantic and like you're doing it before the day and you're doing it while the natural masculine energy is available to you. So, you know, and you can let us know how it goes. Let us know in the comments. Tell me how it goes. I don't know. I, that's that's your deal, man. You gotta you gotta work that stuff out. <laughs> you gotta tell her you love her, right? And it, it doesn't matter, even if it's same sex relationships or whatever, if you're the more dominant partner, if that's what you want to be in a relationship, well, you got to tell someone that you love them. So do that. Do that this month, Libra Moon. So Libra Moon, I hope you've enjoyed that. By the way, Libra Moon, do stick around. Next month, we've got a very exciting month astrologically. We've got Rahu Ketu Axis Shift. Hopefully, I might do an extra video about it as well. So stick around. All right. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Welcome, Scorpio Moon. Thank you so much for joining. 
I hope you're having a good year. I hope you're having a good start to the year. I hope it's nice and easy for you. Uh, I know that last time we looked at two conjunctions in particular. This time we're looking at two transits in particular. The movement of Venus excited me quite a lot, as did the movement of Mars. So Venus is transiting your second house. Uh, the conjunction with Saturn is kind of mid-month. But it's, I mean, she and Saturn are in the same house the whole month. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is great for you. This is great for you in terms of, oh, go shopping. Seriously, have some fun. Buy some cool stuff. Um, I don't often give that kind of advice on this channel, but there you go. Uh, great time to spend with the family. Great time for love um, in that sense. Oh my God, Scorpio Moon, you're having a awesome, 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 awesome. You're one of the rare, rare lucky ones. You're having both of your transits are wonderful because Mars is going through your sixth house of health. Beautiful. You're going to have courage. You're going to have energy. You're going to topple enemies. You're going to win court cases and experience growth in wealth. Can't get better. This is great. I'm so happy for you, Scorpio Moon. You've got a terrific little set here. This is great. But mind you, there are other planetary movements going on. There might be other things going on in your chart. Of course, it's not all, you know, sunshine um, for some people. I totally understand that. Um, what do I want to say here? I want to say that to anyone who isn't going through a brilliant thing or maybe you've got planets doing other things because I haven't gone through all of them um, there is this concept that I've been drawing out in each reading this time which is because of Saturn and Venus being conjunct uh, and in Sagittarius and with what's going on in the world and I, I, I have calculated and synthesized lots of different things and this morning it occurred to me that I must say that anyone who is going through a tough time this could be a great time for introspection this could be a really great time to possibly heal the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him the reason I'm saying that is because this is happening in Sagittarius right so what is the father wound the father wound results from illness divorce death distance or dysfunction and I've got a note in particular for the women that spend some time in contemplation because this is a time where relationships are in focus in the media, in the shops, everywhere. So spend some time. If, if relationships aren't going so well for you, spend some time in contemplation, contemplating your relationship with your father. Um, this is something that you can do on your own. You don't need anyone else. Um, you know, and it's a gentle, lovely thing. Perhaps you're on a long bus ride home or something like that. You can really think about your relationship with your dad. You can think about what he didn't give to you and what and what you needed or would have liked. And you can give that to yourself now. So it's, it's definitely time to start thinking about um, some of that kind of thing. There's some gift coming to you through contemplation, okay? Um, and Mars energy. Mars energy is absolutely epic this month. Uh, Mars enters Aries, his multi composition. Um, and I did say that it's a great transit for you because he's going through your sixth house. Fantastic. So you're the benefactor of that. Uh, but yeah, there's this large burst of masculine energy. And um, it's happening from Feb 6 to Feb 12. It's absolutely huge. The Sh Shadbala bars go off the chart, they literally go off the chart. On those days so men I have a specific message for you this time and my message to you is tell her you love her from 6 to 12 Feb so that's before Valentine's Day which is on the 14th do it 6 to 12 14 it's more romantic you can kind of say look I don't care about commercialized stupid days I am deciding today I'm telling you I love you or whatever it is it could be cheesy but you'll probably love it if you gauge it and kind of get a feeling and test the waters and know that she would be receptive. So I leave that in your hands, Scorpio Moon. But you're Scorpio Moon, so I'm telling you, if anyone should be good at that, it should be you, okay? Because you've got a Scorpio Moon, the depth of love, you know, far out. You guys are awesome. Uh, stay tuned for next month. It, it, next month is a very important month astrologically. There's Rahu Ketu axis shift. I'm pretty sure it's happening March, um, end of March, somewhere there. Hopefully I'll do a little extra video on that as well. So stay tuned for that and uh, I'll see you then. So Sagittarius Moon, Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. 
I hope you're having a really good start to the year. I hope it's a nice pace. I hope it's not too fast or too crazy or any of that. Today I'm looking at two transits in particular. We're going to look at Venus transit through your first house and we're going to look at Mars transit through your fifth house. So what's happening here? Okay, first house, Venus. This is a great time to meet someone. Fantastic. If you are single, get out there and mingle. It's going to be good. Uh, good time all around. Health, wealth, all that kind of thing um, should be quite good. Now due to Saturn's conjunction, this is how I'm reading this, guys. I, I wouldn't normally read a Saturn-Venus conjunction in a birth chart in this way at all but this is transits and I'm thinking of broader cultural things and trends and what's going on I'm thinking lots of things this morning it kind of occurred to me that for ladies in particular this could be a good time to work on healing the father wound and with some of the energies here um, happening in Sagittarius I'm suggesting that it's a good time to possibly heal the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him so um, what is the father wound? The father wound results from illness, divorce, death, distance or dysfunction. So through the contemplation of your father wound um, or just your relationship with your father. I mean, he might just have been a distant dad who was at the office all the time. Okay, So, you know, we've all got some of this to deal with, whether you're a man or a woman. But I've got a note for the ladies in particular that this is... Um, something to contemplate and there's some gift for you through contemplation through contemplating what you needed as a young child what you didn't get and how you can now give it to yourself so that is my message there for the women in particular now this Mars transit is absolutely epic uh, Mars enters Aries his moon through composition it's very exciting huge masculine energy coming through Feb 6 to Feb 12 it's absolutely massive um, it's happening in your fifth house of creativity so transit wise it's not ideal it could be a bit stressful uh, whether you're man or woman it could be worries about self maybe worries about your children uh, expenses could be a bit higher that kind of thing but for the men I have a very specific message and for the men guys I want to tell you that there's this epic masculine energy available to you from 6 to 12 Feb so tell her you love her right do it tell her you love her you know if you've been thinking about it if you've been thinking should I do this or not my advice is do it and do it from 6 to 12 Feb don't wait for the 14th do it earlier say that I don't need a day to tell you that I love you I'm going to do it today and do it earlier it'll be more romantic more appreciated she'll just go wow he's so amazing I leave it in your hands Sagittarius moon uh, and stay tuned for next month because it's a big month astrologically March is and uh, we've got Rahu Ketu axis shift so I'm going to hopefully do a little something extra on that so stay tuned on the channel but thank you so much Sagittarius moon and we are going to welcome Capricorn moon Capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining I hope you've had a good start to the year I hope it's been nice and easy for you and hasn't been too stressful uh, what have we got this month so this month last month I looked at two conjunctions this month I'm looking at two transits I'm looking at the transit of Venus and I'm looking at the transit of Mars so we've got Venus transiting your 12th house uh, oh this is good this is nice great time for financial gains you know a bit of escapism entertainment of course we'd like to escape through a movie or something like that or a play or something um, travel could be good for you there could also though be unnecessary expenditure so just be a bit careful with that uh, due to the conjunction of Venus and Saturn I've kind of analyzed those energies and through the analysis I, it kind of occurred to me this is not what I would say in a reading that Saturn and Venus conjunct means this but in this particular reading considering transits considering Valentine's Day and what's happening in the world and all these different things it occurred to me that this energy here happening in Sagittarius could be really good for healing the father wound so what do I mean by that um, this is for women in particular though it could be women or men it, it doesn't particularly matter but the father wound results from illness divorce death distance or dysfunction right so even if you just had a dad who was at the office all the time right so I've got a, a special note for ladies that spend some time in contemplation uh, contemplating your relationship with your father if there was something that you needed or would have liked as a child 
that he didn't give to you? Think about what that is and think about how you can give that to yourself now. So that's really my message there. Um, Mars energy is epic this month. It's really sensational. So Mars is entering Aries, his military composition. It's really exciting. I was looking at the Shadbala report and the Mars was going off the charts from Feb 6 to Feb 12. It's absolutely epic. So um, this is not the best transit. Mars doesn't particularly like being in the fourth house of home. Um, enemies can crop up, look after your health, mother's health, maintain harmony with loved ones. So, okay, not the best transit perhaps. But men, I have a specific message for you. Because of this epic Mars energy that's happening from Feb 6 to Feb 12, uh, tell her you love her, right? Just do it. Just tell her you love her. Sweep her off her feet on 6 to 12 Feb. Don't wait till Valentine's Day. Do it before right? And you can come across as more romantic because you can be like, well, I don't need a day to tell you I love you. I'm doing it. And you nominate the day from 6 to 12 Feb. So Capricorn Moon, I leave that in your hands. Um, do stay tuned for next month. Uh, it's a very big month astrologically. We're going to be having Rahu Ketu actually shift. I'm going to be doing something on that. So do stay tuned for that. All right. So Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we have got two exciting transits that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, last time I did two conjunctions. This time we're doing two transits. So we're looking at the transit of Venus and we're looking at the transit of Mars. So Venus is transiting your 11th house. Um, oh, this is great. Oh, you are one of the lucky people. I tell you, you're very, very lucky. This is great. You've got a great Venus transit. So expansion, friends, wealth, opportunities, success, recognition, all the good stuff. You've got a great transit of Mars uh, going through a house of courage, beautiful transit, money, wealth, courage, energy, confidence, strength, perspective, and clarity in life. Woo, lucky you, Aries Moon. I'm excited for you. This is great. Um, any of you who aren't going through a great time, though, and, and you're not experiencing too much of this, what I would ask you to do, we've got Saturn and Venus together. Now, in a birth chart, I wouldn't say that Saturn and Venus together means what I'm about to say, but because of this is a transit and I'm thinking about what's happening culturally, I'm thinking about Valentine's Day, I'm thinking about all kinds of different things, it occurred to me that the energies are going to be supporting some healing of the father wound at this time. So it's a great time for introspection uh, and the possibility of healing the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him. Now, the reason I say that is because this is happening in Sagittarius. So there's that intellectual component coming through there. Now, what is the father wound? It results from illness, divorce, death, distance, or dysfunction. So even if, say, for example, your dad was just at the office all the time, that counts, okay? Um, we've all got some kind of thing to heal with our father, whether he's alive or not, whether he's in out the same country or living overseas or whatever it is, right? We've all got some little bit of work to do there. So I've got a note in particular for ladies, uh, spend some time in contemplation. There's some gift in that for you, contemplating your father wound. And this is something you can do on your own, and it's as gentle and lovely. And um, you can do it on a bus ride home. You know, it doesn't have to be done, you know, in a formal way or any of that. It's just something to contemplate when, when you feel you have the time. And I have a specific message for men this month. And my message for men is, with all this beautiful Mars energy, you've got this epic, strong macho, masculine, beautiful, gorgeous Mars energy. I'm so excited for you, men. My message is tell her you love her. Just do it. Don't worry about all this toxic masculinity and headlines and Gillette advert and all this nonsense and forget about all that. Tell her you love her, right? And do that from 6 to 12 Feb. Don't wait to Valentine's Day, which I, I think the 14th of Feb or somewhere there. Do it 6 to 12 Feb and say, I don't need a day to tell you I love you. I'm going to do it on this day. And you'll come across as more romantic, I promise. So Aquarius Moon, I leave that in your hands. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome <clears throat> Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, 
Welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this time we're taking a look at two transits in particular. So we are looking at, and I know the camera is about to, oh, I might be able to get in. Will I do it? How quick can I be? Um, Venus, okay, we're gonna look at the transit of Venus and we're gonna look at the transit of Mars. So Venus is transiting your 10th house. Uh, okay, this is not, the best transit for Venus. Venus likes Venus likes shopping. Venus loves being in the second house. She loves being in the 12th house where she can have a little holiday, but bring her into the 10th where there's some work to do and she's going, I don't want to do this. So <laughs> this is not the best transit for Venus. But I have a note, especially for the ladies out there. This, this is in particular for women out there. I've been analyzing this Saturn-Venus conjunction and what I want to say here, and I know the camera is just about to drop out, but that's okay, I'll keep going. And then we'll start up again. Um, with this Venus Saturn conjunction, I've been analyzing it in terms of Valentine's Day is coming and, and the trends and, and you know what was happening last month. And in the very broad scheme of things and, and this movement of Venus, she's just coming through. She's gonna do a little high five to Ketu. Uh, as, as Ketu comes back to be with Saturn she's going pretty fast but the fact is she's in that house with Saturn and they're there together the whole time and they're friends they like each other Saturn's got this old man old father time energy Venus has got this beautiful youthful feminine energy and what I was thinking was this is a great chance to heal the father wound through an intellectual understanding of your relationship with him. Why intellectual? Because Sagittarius is here. So what is the father wound exactly? Father wound results from illness, divorce, death, distance or dysfunction. So even if your dad was just a distant dad who worked in an office or something like that, that counts, right? Because as a little child, you would have wanted more time with him. So work out what you would have wanted as a little child. Meditate, think about what that would be. Think about what you didn't get and think about how you can now give that to yourself, okay? Um, so it's a special thing for ladies. Um, um, men and women can do it. If you're a guy, Pisces moon, of course do this as well. But I'm suggesting in particular for ladies, spend some time in contemplation. There's some gift in it for you, okay? And this is gentle, easy. It's something you can do. Pisces moon, so sorry about that. It happens, it always happens to us. We're right at the end and that's what happens. The camera decides to pass out, doesn't it? What was I saying? I think I watched briefly the end of that last clip. I had said something about this is gentle, easy work to do. So I was obviously talking about the contemplation of the relationship with your father. Okay, and I had this note about ladies that there's some gift in this for you. Gentle, easy work that you can do on your own, I probably was saying. Um, hopefully I'd covered all what that was about. I think I have. Um, and I hope I raised the point that, you know, it's, it's nothing formal. It's something that you can contemplate on a bus ride home, okay? So, you know, or waiting for the bus or, or whatever it is, it's something that you just contemplate around this time. And just the fact that you're listening to this now, you can do this any time from now, you know? But the energies are supporting that. So, um, because very often with astrology, that's another thing that sometimes things happen in the lead up to an event. So like the Gillette commercial, it's really interesting that that came out and now there's this surge of masculine energy that's coming with Mars going into Aries. It's really quite amazing. I have noticed that a lot in my life, that before the astrological event, sometimes the event that's supposed to happen at that time happens in the lead up. Sometimes it happens after as well. So it, it depends. It depends, um, I suppose, how you're metabolizing time. Oh, that's an interesting concept. Gosh, we do have fun Pisces moon, don't we? This is great. I love working on your one because I kind of have to rush through all the other ones. Then I get to you and I can relax. Uh, what's happening with Mars? So you might notice that in the timestamp too, that you get a bit more time. It's exciting as well. Uh, Mars, okay, let's have a look. Mars energy. I'm not Pisces moon, by the way, but um, it's because you're at the end. You guys get, get, get the... Uh, 
get the good stuff. Mars energy, right, Mars energy is epic this month. So you've got Mars transiting your second house of material things. Okay, keep an eye on your temper. Uh, we all have to do that sometimes, don't we? Especially if we're at home. <laughs> um, and the second house, childhood home. If you're going to your childhood home, this might be something to do. Watch your temper. Uh, aim for harmonious relations and speak kindly to everyone at this time. Yeah, I mean, just, just watch what you say. And it's like, you know, if you feel the need to swear, do it silently in your head. Um, you know, hold something in and, and then release it in other ways elsewhere without those people being there. So um, that's something to do with the Mars energy there. But I have a message for men. Okay, so I had a message for the ladies that spend some time in contemplation. Um, contemplating your relationship with your father absolutely now my message for men is a bit cheesy but it's true because we've got this epic mars energy this burst of masculine energy as mars enters aries into his military composition this is happening from feb 6 to feb 12 i don't know if i mentioned that um, before the camera got cut but it's huge the shadbala scores were going crazy right and um we're going off the charts basically and so there's this natural surge of masculine energy and it's really wonderful. And I'm saying to men, tell her you love her. Just do it. Don't think twice about it. Just tell her you love her and, um, you know, tell him you love him. Whatever it is, same sex, you know, whatever. Fine. If you're the more dominant person, tell the other that you love them, right? And do that from between 6 to 12 Feb. I'm saying because there's that natural surge of beautiful masculine energy use it you know and um, tell that special someone that you love them and do it before so 6 to 12 Feb this is so perfect um, because it's before Valentine's Day so it's more romantic if you do the grand gesture on a day before and say look I don't need a day to tell you I love you I'm gonna surprise you I'm gonna do it today I nominate this day because I want to, you know, something like that. I don't know, it's a bit cheesy. You work it out. But <laughs> um, stay tuned, guys, next month. Next month is an exciting month astrologically, so do stay tuned for the Mar March outlook. Uh, we're going to have Rahu Ketu axis shift. That's really big news. So hopefully I might do an extra video on that. I might, or I might incorporate it into the big video. I don't know. We'll see how we go for time, but I would like to do a little something unique for that actually I think it kind of calls for it because it is a big event uh, it's going to have an impact for a year and a half so stick around for that um, what I might do actually is I might even be a bit brave and bring the camera and show you this and I'll link the other signs to this little end bit as well and we'll call it some kind of Shadbala thing so how about I'll bring the camera and I'll show you I don't know how good it'll look because my screen might look a bit orange. Actually, why don't I turn off the color for an hour? There we go, I've turned it off for an hour. So let's have a look, I'll show you my screen and you can see, hopefully it'll work, I don't know if it'll work, but what I want you to do is have a look at Mars right here. So I'm gonna click up Feb 1st we're going to go Feb 1, so that's 1, we're going to go 2, 3, 4, 5, have a look, that's the 5th, alright, I've been saying the 6th, I should have probably said the 5th, whoops, well, you can see it for sure now, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, you see Mars is off the charts, can you see, isn't that absolutely epic? Seven, eight, nine. God, nine. Look at that. Feb nine. Like you're really off the chart there. I mean, that's just the maddest thing ever, isn't it? Have a look. And then we've got, so let's go up 10, 11, 12. So we're still off the chart there at 12. But then it does go down. Look at that. Okay, so we've got the 16th as a little spike there, but then it really does go down. I think I checked it for the rest of the whole month. 
And, uh, you know, I mean, you get your spikes now and then. But isn't that, isn't that something? Isn't that absolutely incredible? So, guys, what a month. We've got these spike of Mars energy, which I just think is so beautiful. So let's see how we use it. And, I mean, of course, women can use it too. Men can use it too. We've got the masculine and feminine within ourselves. So women, use it in some creative project. Men, go out and tell someone that you love them. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of me too or anything. Because if you have fear, you could manifest that thing. Go ahead fearlessly and manifest something beautiful. So everybody, I'm going to close for this month. It's been an absolute joy and an absolute pleasure to give you a little mini reading. Uh, if you'd like a proper reading, <laughs> of course, you're very welcome to get in touch. I'd love to do that for you. And uh, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next time.